like to read, but I also like to use tools and eat food. And sometimes things can get a little bit messy. But eight-year-old Isaac has come up with the perfect hands-free reading solution. Let's build it. I'm Ruth, a patent holding inventor and maker. And I'm Sean, a designer and engineer. And we believe that kids have the best invention ideas. So join us on our mission to build kids' ideas, make mistakes, and show that anyone can be an inventor. Kids invent stuff. So Isaac has done the hard work for us. We've got a helmet, we've got a supporting arm and our book. Looks pretty simple to me. Let's get building. Suddenly, she passes right in front of me. Suddenly, feels like I'm gonna fall. I can see all of my dreams so perfectly. Suddenly, love's not a dream at all. A helmet we've got our supporting arm that moves and then this is the bit where we would mount the book so let's try it on it is a little bit heavy okay so if we add weight here it is going to strangle me <laughs> I can barely see you now <laughs> hello maybe we need a slightly different helmet back to the drawing board so the first helmet was not sturdy enough so I've got this one. I'm hoping the fact that it will go all the way around my face will maybe spread the weight of the supporting arm and the book. It is, oh, it's very snug, really snug actually. Hopefully, my thought is once everything's attached, I might be able to like remove this. It's really not that comfortable, but definitely feels more secure than the first one. It's, it's kind of stuck as well. I might actually need some help taking this off, you know? I don't fancy wearing this the whole time. Hello? Help! Help! Now turning a page in a book is not as simple as it might at first seem. We have to lift up the page and then turn it. So to do that mechanically, I've got a motor with a wheel on it and the plan is that I would spin the wheel, it would lift up the page and then I have a stick and a servo and the stick will be attached to the servo and that will come in and it will turn taking that page and folding it over and then it would all reset and start again and so the brain behind this is going to be an Arduino which is a programmable circuit board and the plan is that I write some code that means the motor turns for a set amount of time stops then the servo goes and all together that should hopefully turn the page. I am trying to get this code to work. I actually feel like it hates me. <laughs> so I think what I did is I went in and tried to do the whole thing. And so what I've ended up doing is bit by bit, I wrote some code that makes the motor work. I wrote some code that made the servo work. I then made that run off a button. I then messed around with the timing and it seems to be working, but it has taken twice as long as I thought it would do. So this is the test setup. So we've got these little bits here to hold the book down. We've got our motor on a little spring because obviously as we turn the pages, the section of this side of the book goes down and we always want the wheel to touch the page. And then this stick that should hopefully turn the page. It's time to test it. And if it works, then we can start to actually attach these permanently. I am quite nervous. This is a copy of my book, so uh, I'd like to not damage it. Okay. Oh, we turned a single page in the right order. Okay. Oh no, I got stuck. Okay, so there's two issues. It's not really designed to run off one of these batteries, so I need to look at a better battery solution. It needs to be secured down better than just bits of clamps. That will definitely help. I think with a bit of tweaking, definitely onto something. It is still rather heavy. I'm not sure that's... <laughs> I can barely speak. It's really quite heavy. I don't know if we need some sort of like counterweight. And that's before we've even switched it on. Hmm. The weight of the mechanism that holds the book and the way that it's held so you can read it 
means that when you put on Isaac's reading helmet, it's really heavy forwards. Your neck is like, ugh. Now, I started to do some research and I realized that racing car drivers have a kind of similar problem. They want to keep their neck nice and supported and so they have these hands devices that hold their helmets in place. I've got this kind of backpack strap. We've used this sort of thing for the dog poo launcher, for the ultimate backpack. And what I'm hoping is I can wear this so that by tethering the back of the helmet to my waist, that that will kind of counterbalance the weight on the front. And it's definitely not going to win any awards for comfort, but it's a lot better than it was before. This is me clumsily gluing in a microphone to make eight-year-old Isaac's reading helmet voice activated. Okay, I'm whispering so I don't set off the microphone. Hopefully you can hear me. Here we go. Turn. Turn. Hopefully, it works that well when there's a book in it. Time to test it. One of the best kept secrets of reading is that it's legal to read a book pretty much anywhere. And now thanks to eight-year-old Isaac, you can even read on the go. Gonna go and get that book. Gonna go and grab that book. Gonna go and fetch that book and read it today. Gonna go and get that book. Gonna go and grab that book. Gonna go and fetch that book and read it right now. Gonna go and get that book. I can't believe how well this works. Fetch that book and read it today. Gonna go and get that book. Gonna go and grab that book. Gonna go and fetch that book and read it right now. Yeah. The helmet's not designed for eating. I'm reading and getting a neck workout. Gonna go and get that book. Gonna go and grab that book. Gonna go and fetch that book and read it today. Gonna go and get that book. Isaac, this is brilliant. Gonna go and fetch that book and read it right now. Gonna go and get that book. Gonna yeah. go and grab that book. Gonna go and fetch that book and read it today. Gonna go and get that book. Yeah. Gonna go and grab that book. Gonna go and fetch that book and read it right now. Books filled with words. Lots of pages. Made of paper! A massive thank you to Isaac for his incredible invention idea. Now, if you know of any kids whose invention should be brought to life, send them to our website, it'll appear on the screen. And who knows, we might bring to life their invention idea. See you next time. Bye!